I could be red, or I could be yellow, I could be blue, or I could be purple, I could be green or pink or black or white, I could be every color you like. Namaste everyone and welcome to Stories You Should Know. I am Tarushi and it's a beautiful, beautiful time to celebrate Pride Month. And who other than the winner of Mr. Gay World 2016, the youngest person to hold the title, Mr. Anvish Sahu. Hello and welcome to the podcast. <laughs> I'm doing my own drum rolls because that's I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Do with no support, so I'm like a multi. multi we'll, we'll throw in some background music. <laughs> some after effects. Of Over course. Here, some Absolutely. So how have you been? I have been great. I mean, look at me. What do you think? Feeling gorgeous, feeling feeling like myself. I'm always on a hundred. <laughs> Not always, actually. I think uh, this on a on a serious note, uh, the pandemic has been. Uh, I think it started off with you know, I was like, "Abhi, achhe se sara kam karna hai." You know, this is a great time for me to sort of you know put myself together. I had just started up you know working full time, and uh, I was like, "This is a great time to you know." really push myself, encourage myself to learn new things. And I think at the start of this year, things sort of started, you know, becoming a little, um, a little crazy, especially I'm, I'm somewhere in Delhi NCR and uh, we all know what happened only a month right. back. And uh, the COVID situation was so bad that I think it started getting to me. And for the first time in this like entire one year, I was actually in a space where I was just so scared because my father goes out to work. He cannot work from home. He's an engineer. And uh, he has to go to a plant and he has to work with workers. And for the first time, I was like, I was looking at, around and people were dying around me like mosquitoes, like they didn't exist. You see them, you know, seven days before, seven days after you get to know they're no more. And um, I think uh, for the first time, I was a little, you know, there was a little uh, rain yeah. on my parade. But uh, I think now I'm sort of getting back to my little zone. Pride Month obviously sort of got me all excited, all jazzed up. This is the one month where everybody celebrates and I feel, <laughs> I feel great. So um, I think I'm in a good space right now and uh, very grateful to be able to, you know, work from home. No complaints. No complaints. I think it shouldn't be just one month, right? It should be always. The celebration should always happen. But of course, yes, there is this one month and everyone's talking about pride and uh, the community, which really, really deserves all the focus. Uh, but it should happen yeah, yeah. like 24-7, 365 days. Unfortunately, it's not. But we hope we reach there very soon. Um, yeah. To begin with, you know, uh, you were 16 when you came out. Yeah. And, uh, and then you were 20 when you won the title. The... Yeah time duration you know the period between 16 to 20 that get that entire uh, space what happened during that time like what's your story when you tell people that when you came out at 16 this is what happened but but when you won the title at 20 and I know this because I read about you a lot and I heard a lot of interviews you said that you weren't the favorite Right, like people win pageants and they become overnight stars, and people are just, yeah. you know, loving them and everything. And you got hate messages. Like the moment yeah. you won the morning, you got hate messages. So this transition from the period of being sixteen to twenty, just tell me something about it. So, um, like you mentioned, sixteen was the time when I actually came out to myself first, and that was probably the most difficult aspect of the entire journey. Because you do grow up in a very cisgender, heteronormative world where you think the only way to be is um, to be, you know, the only normi normal, def only definition of normal that exists is uh, that of heteronormativity. So if you're a man, you have to marry a woman eventually. If you're a woman, you, get, you, marry, a, you marry a man. And um, when I started realizing that, you know, the attraction that I felt towards men, that was actually called homosexuality. I didn't even know the, the definition of gay or homosexual or the existence of these words. But once I got to know about it and then, and then I realized that, you know, this is not a phase. This is who I am. I am attracted to men and this is going to stay with me forever. I just realized, the, I mean, I, I still remember like my heart sinking into my stomach because I realized that, okay, my life is not going to be easy from here on because uh, we all know the representation that, you know, uh, queer men have had or queer folks for that matter have had um, in, in popular media. 
um, and why just you know claim you know films or television but you know every form of you know popular media that we've come across even books for that matter to popular books i'm not of course literature has been very inclusive but uh, popular uh, novels have always represented us or looked at us as just you know uh, comic relief elements and um, i just realized that my life is not going to be easy and i remember just crying and uh, just feeling horrible about myself because there was no hope at all what am i going to look forward to i people look forward to getting married people look, look forward to get having great careers here i am at a juncture where i'm not even able to focus on my career on my you know 12th boards because it's a big deal in india i wanted to do well but i was not able to focus i was just like i'm gay like abhi ab iske baad kya karna hai there is no point of reference that you have around you um but thankfully you know i belong to a queer millennial generation so i could go on the internet and look for you know really weird questions uh, answers and i found all of them one by one step by step and um, you know i looked i remember finding these documentaries of freddy mercury of david bowie uh, jean paul gaultier his shows just finding people as points of references and feeling that oh my god now maybe there is uh, you know there is hope and uh, i still remember in fact there was this video of steven dutchness he's a pole artist and a uh, wonderful pole artist and he was on america's got talent where he was by the way bullied by one of the judges he was mocked that and he was wearing a pair of stripper heels and he was looking beautiful gorgeous and i was like wow you can be femme and you can be beautiful like those two words never coexisted in my head and uh, he became my first point of reference i was like acha this is a possibility somewhere in the world then it's a possibility in my life as well and then one by one things started just falling into place i i just took charge of my life and i was like now i'm not going to let it go um you know i didn't i was at a point very suicidal as well i didn't want to live at all but i decided that i'm going to live and i'm going to rewrite my book my book is not going to have a, a sad ending it's not going to have a miserable ending um because i'm not uh, mai teemak nahi hu ki mai chup chup ke jiunga i'm going to be um you know uh, I an out and proud person and I'm going to rewrite uh, the the history that we've had um, and we are going to have a fabulous representation at least in the years to come I cannot rewrite my past but I can rewrite my future and right. uh, you know Mr Gay World you know happened I decided to participate I had to win Mr Gay India to win Mr to, to go for Mr Gay World but even through Mr Gay India as you've mentioned even during the pageant I was not like a you know a favorite contestant in any sort I was in fact the dark horse in the competition and uh, I was very happy to be there because I was selected I think around you know out of 236 or some contestants there who had you know pitched in for the competition and I was selected to be there in Bombay for the final I was just very happy about that but uh, when I reached there I realized that I realized I was not delusional that you know everything I'm just fabulous I'm great I'm the perfect candidate I was aware of who I was I was aware of what I brought to the table and i just to stay true to what i who i was as a person i knew that maybe grooming was something that i i, I wasn't ready with uh, you know you had to be you had to look a certain way and i i didn't i wasn't ready but uh, i was like this is something that i can work around you know if i win it grooming is not rocket science aap ek mahina apne aap ke sath spend karoge and dheere dheere you will figure it out um so i was like okay let's let's do this but then when i won um there was a lot of hate on the internet people were just like the very moment that announcement went up on facebook facebook was big back in those days and uh, people were just like sending out hate mail that how did this guy win this competition he's black he's brown he's skinny he's dark he's ugly kuch nahi aata isko grooming nahi aata daadi kaise hai iski isko kaise bhejna hai but uh, somehow i was completely like untouched by all of this negativity maybe it it did affect me internally in some way when i look back at it now but i don't think i don't remember looking or reading those comments and taking any of them seriously because i was mature enough to understand that you know i switch off my phone none of those hate comments exist anymore they are just in a virtual cloud and if that cloud is removed they don't exist anymore right so, there is uh, the people sitting behind the their cam their computers and their phones and just spreading hate so it's yeah. it's good thing that you didn't focus on it that much exactly <laughs> So there's this one thing of coming out to your uh, family, and then there is this another thing of going to a pageant and running for this pageant. So was there? What about your family? How did they take? Uh, they take the entire thing about you coming out and then you going 
onto for a pageant after years after coming out how did they take this thing up and what was the support system kind of like before and after yeah so my parents were actually the last people that i came out to in my sort of little circle uh, i first came out uh, to myself then to my sister then to my friends then to my teachers and then uh, i was at the conjunction of you know sort of transitioning from school to college so when i moved to college i actually went out there uh, you know entered college being an out and proud you know gay person so um, i remember in fact uh, you know facing some you know fair amount of homophobia as well and some fair amount of femphobia as well but uh, i somehow was just so convinced that you know i was in somehow in some ways because i was just so out of the closet i was in, invincible in my head so i had sort of conquered a lot of you know the evils in my in my head and which is why it didn't matter if the evils existed still around me so um the only reason perhaps when i that i came out to my parents uh was the fact that i could not keep it to myself uh you know anymore i was like i need to speak you know speak to them about this i they are they are a very important part of my life and i can't keep lying to them and you know i'm, I'm living with them i can't keep lying to them and then secondly um, in order to be able to participate for mr ki india i had to come out to my parents it was a it was a clause uh, because they don't want any unnecessary you know fights in, uh, towards the you know once right. you're into the pageant and um, you you're there for the finals so uh, i was like okay i mean if that's if any way i want to come out to my parents because they're very important to me and i know that they're not going to throw me out of the house so it's safe and sound um but um it actually uh, my relationship between my parents and me actually got really uh, sort of how do i put it i mean it was it had to suffer a few you know bruises here and there because uh, my mother was very very shocked and she could not keep it to herself like i would often see her cry many a times and i felt very responsible for making her cry uh, my father was trying to be very strong but he was also not happy with the fact that you know that that i was gay and that you know they had expectations from me they were expecting that i would get a you know a, a bahu to their to the family uh, those expectations that you sort of grow up with all your life but um somehow i was not uh, bogged down by any of those expectations because i felt like uh, you know this is the only way to be there's no point in thinking about what other things that could have happened so um when i won mr gay india there was uh, a lot of um, sort of uh, good publicity around me in odia newspapers and channels um and somehow they had actually forgotten the fact that i was gay they were more happy about the fact that you know i had won a pageant um you know on a national level um so of course there were a few questions here and there about me being gay which i was completely fine with answering i was a very uh, i was already so comfortable in my skin that i didn't mind you know even if there were some insensitive questions i sort of brushed them off because i was just i was also basking in the glory of having won uh, a pageant that i never really expected you know in some ways um, of winning and uh, so my parents somehow got used to that idea as well um, and and they were more comfortable with the idea of me being gay but they were not comfortable with you, you know the things that came with it say you know uh, my dressing choices for example i'm also a certain kind of gay i like i like wearing you know heels if i want to i like wearing makeup and uh, i didn't grow up liking any of these things but um i mean i i grew up liking but hiding all of these things but uh, now i was able to do it out in the open so they were they were not very comfortable with those things um they were not very comfortable with the idea of me marrying a man for example uh, and i got into a relationship only 6 6 months after i had you know come back from mr gay world so there were certain things that you know, they would they would refer to my boyfriend as uh, you know your, your friend and um, there was there were a few things here and there that they were not very comfortable with but somehow it didn't matter because i was also living in a hostel i was still in college i was dealing with my own set of things so it didn't somehow matter what was going on with my parents i was any way away from them i would meet them like you know one one week or two weeks max in a year and then i was back in the hostel where everybody sort of in some ways celebrated me because i happened to be you know i happened to be an engineering student student who had won a pageant and it was a big deal for all the boys and the girls and they were like are wah matlab aisa aisa bhi hota hai ki koi engineering college mein aake you go to a beauty pageant that too and you right. you know i learned a lot of you know tricks of the trade you know i actually started modeling professionally so they would see my pictures in the newspapers i did a few ads here and there so they were they were actually more fascinated with the work that i was doing and they, um, somehow 
my the aspect of me being a celebrity or someone in the in popular media was um, was more exciting to them than the fact that you know I was gay and uh, maybe that made it easier for me to be gay as well uh, so they didn't really mind the boys sort of start getting you know um, dealing with me being gay much in a much healthier manner um, they they would initially there were a few you know insensitive questions a little um, you know questions like you know anvesh are you gay you know they would just come to me and they would just ask these, these questions to me and it was a little uncomfortable because coming out again and again is not an easy thing to do but somehow i managed uh, you know i i was like okay it's okay like let's not think over things certain things it's fine if they want to know more about me i should be more inclusive and you know explain them things they're just curious right and you know uh, you rightly say that winning this pageant did put you in a spot you know it it gave you that limelight and now when you are there you are in the spot where everyone is watching you right now the pageant is yeah. over you have won now people are watching you they're watching every move uh, they're looking up to you there is an entire community that is looking up to you because you have won this pageant yeah. there are so many people who are yet to come out right and they are watching you and they are seeing you as an example as an idol suddenly and then there is there are a lot of other responsibilities which comes in with the fame or with the limelight that you get especially at this position because now you are a representative of your community it's it's yeah. not just you it is the entire community whatever you do is going to reflect an entire light on the community does that get yeah. to you like that responsibility were you ready for that responsibility are you still ready for that responsibility or not like how does how do you manage that well even when i was uh, you know crowned the you know winner of mr gay world india i knew that i was going to be representing india at mr gay world but to, in the truest sense i don't think i am the truest representative of the community because our community is very diverse there are trans folks there are intersex folks um there are you know um lesbians there are uh, bisexual folks there are asexual folks and i don't think uh i uh, i understand all of these you know varied aspects of the community well enough to be called the the, the you know sole representative of the community i was there to represent my community my work and uh, uh you know represent in some ways what it meant to be you know a fem gay boy in india um so i always made sure that you know i'm talking about my story in context to what my back story has been and not trying to always portray this image that i am the sole representative of the community because that is not true in any way at all and i shouldn't try to do something um where i'm where i might actually not be you know very inclusive of the entire community so um i have never really thought about uh you know this this pressure that's there on my head i'm there to represent myself in the best of my conscience and if i'm true to my conscience then it's fine and i always believe in being myself every time even when we having this conversation i'm not putting up a facade of you know trying to talk like a certain person or trying to be the representative of mr gay india i'm mr gay india has already you know chosen me as a representative so that's i've already you know overcome that uh, you know little um, you know hurdle in my life now i'm just here to represent you know my 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 organization the work that i do um my community in some ways as well and i just try to represent the best version of me i try becoming a better version of me each day each passing day and i think once you do that everything else is sorted the overthinking everything is just going to make things worse right and uh, you know getting talking about your work because we spoke you just spoke about you know how you represent yourself and how your work represents you and yeah. i know uh, like your work represents a lot it talks about like gender and not just one gender it just talks about gender issues right tell me something about your work explain uh, how you came up with this because you are an artist and then expressing yeah. is a part of art so just tell us mm-hmm. something uh, about your work and everything about it sure thank you i'm very glad you asked this question because uh, my art in some ways also dots my entire process of understanding gender as a spectrum from it being a binary concept for me growing up and now being able to you know celebrate the entire spectrum in the truest way um the reason why i wanted to you know uh, the, i have been drawing actually all my life uh, but i think um, the reason now i'm able to connect to people the way i am with my work it's because it's very true to myself and i feel like everybody in some way or the other is is a misfit in their own way and that's why they relate so much to my work i started out with the effeminate 
uh, which is a Latin word which associates itself to being, uh, you know, feminine or being effeminate. And that idea is always looked down upon. And I wanted to take away that stigma from the word effeminacy. I'm a femme man, and I wanted to live a more dignified, empowered life. Uh, how do you do that? You you do that by taking that stigma away, by reclaiming that you know word, by taking the negativity away from it, and step by step you build a little bubble. Uh, and effeminia was that. Effeminia was that utopian world, that ut utopian bubble I had created for myself, where everybody accepted me the way I am, where I am able to accept everybody uh, who's who's doing good work, uh, you know, by not uh, adversely affecting anybody else. So. Um, it, it was actually a space where I just followed, you know, I understood my conscience and just followed my conscience in the truest way. And slowly and steadily, it became this little community where, uh, you know, it just has become, uh, you know, about a talking point uh, for a lot of uh, misfits. And um, of course, I bring in a lot of, you know, femme, non-binary, queer representation to the forefront with my work. I'm so glad that, you know, through Mr. Gamedia and then through a lot of the work that I've done in the past, now I've reached a point where a lot of people consume my, uh, you know, my my work, and I've become a content creator of sorts. Um, and people look at my work and they get inspired by it, or they they recreate my work, or they recreate the pictures that I do. And um, it's 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 fun. It's interesting. It's it's lovely to see how people sort of understand and consume uh, my my content as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm I'm just trying to bring in that you know empowered representation of queer femme men of color. Uh, through my work, and uh, I hope to continue doing this and doing trying to rewrite what you know all that was um, you know um, all that misrepresentation that existed in the past for us. Right. And now before we wrap up, uh, I want you to say something for the entire community uh, and the people who follow you, especially the village and the community you have built over the past years. You know, people who follow you, who talk to you, who look up to you. Uh, whatever you want to tell them, whatever you want to say to them, a message, uh, a monologue, or something heart to heart, anything. Yeah. There was a, there was a simple say, um, you know, quote that I had read in uh, Robin S. Sharma's uh, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. It might seem like a very cliche book to many, but I remember when I read it, it gave me so much hope for the future. And I kept, you know, held on to that book forever. And I still have it, you know, underlined. Um, the quote says, uh, you all hold, we all hold such infinite potential within the fortress of our minds. Dare to tap into your greatness. It is your birthright. And uh, it, is a, it is a quote that I've always lived by, even till date. There is so much potential within all of us, but sometimes someone tells us that, you know, we're not good enough or we, or sometimes even as saboteur, it keeps telling us that, you know, you're not good enough, you can't do this. But if you believe that you can, if you truly embrace yourself, then you can you can reach the infinity. There is no limit to how much you can achieve and how much you know greatness you can actually spread in your uh, in your life and around you. So uh, just keep striving only and only for the best, and uh, always you know also aim at you know leading a very peaceful life. And and I think when when there's you know when you lead a peaceful life yourself, you're just going to create a lot of you know good energy around you and. Only good things are going to happen happen to you. You're going to meet good people. Like today, I met Tarushi. <laughs> so um, there's energy, you know, all around you, and um, yeah, that you're going to live live a very fulfilling life, and that's what we're here for, right? Like living a fulfilling life, simple, peaceful, shanti se jina hai sabko. What a beautiful message to end this podcast with. Thank you so much for being part of Stories You Should Know. Happy Pride Month. And I really hope we get to do this more often soon. And I hope you be safe. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tarushi. Thank you for having me. Um, it's been such a crazy, you know, Pride Month. But every time I get to have a conversation with wonderful folks like you, it, it only adds to my life as well. So very, very grateful to be sharing the space with you and your audience. And a very happy Pride Month uh, to all of us. So hearing us, watching us, whichever way, medium you are on. <laughs> Absolutely. Everyone, thank you for listening to us. Please be safe and keep listening to stories you should know.